In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Python to save data to a file in three different ways, using plain text, the JSON library, and the pickle library. We'll also be looking at using exceptions to handle any problems that might arise, so let's get started. We previously made this super simple to-do list using Python and the GUIPy graphical user interface library. But this has a pretty severe limitation in that when we close the window, all of our data is lost. So today, we'll add the ability to save tasks when we close the app and then load them in when it's reopened. You can watch that tutorial if you wish by clicking on the link on screen now or in the video description where you'll also find the complete code. I'm here in Visual Studio Code with the original file from the tutorial. The first method we're going to use to save our tasks is a plain text file, so I'll rename the file to do text.py and start making those changes. With VS Code's fold feature, I'll hide all the functions for creating and editing tasks to focus on what we need to add to the program for saving and loading our tasks. We're going to need a couple of new functions, so I'll define these functions as load tasks and save tasks, and for now I'll just get them to print a message to the terminal. So how and when do we call these functions in our app? We can call the load tasks function just before we launch the app with app.run to populate the list box widgets defined earlier. For the save tasks function, we'll need to set that function to run when the user closes the window. So we'll use the onClose method of our main application object and pass in the name of our function as the argument. So let's get a sense of how this will work. When I run the app, we get the message loading tasks in the terminal. Then when I exit, the message saving tasks is printed, but now the window won't close and I'll need to terminate the process from the VS Code window. The reason for this is that in GUIPy, the onClose function has to return a Boolean value indicating whether or not to proceed with closing the window. If no return value is given, then the function implicitly returns none and the window stays open. This behavior allows for pop-ups like, do you want to save changes, for example? We're just going to save the tasks automatically in close, so I'll go back to the save tasks function and explicitly return true. Now the window will obediently close when it's asked to. The first approach we'll take when saving our tasks is to make a plain text file and put our tasks in a format that we can then use to load them up again. There are approximately infinity ways to do this, but here's what I've decided on. The text file will consist of two lines for each of the two lists. We'll need to use some character to separate each task, and the most logical one to use in this case is the tab character. If we used a printable character like a hyphen or a vertical bar, then the risk would be that if that character were used in an actual task, our app would mistake that for a separator. On the app, the tab key can never be included in a task since it's used to move focus from widget to widget. So let's write the save tasks function first. We want to construct a string with to do and done items separated by the tab character. This is achieved with Python's join method, and maybe somewhat counterintuitively, this is a string method with the list passed in as the argument. I'll start by creating a tab separated string of the to do items, so I'll specify the tab character with backslash t, then dot join, and then the list of to do items, which in this case is to do underscore lst dot items where to do underscore LST is the GUI pie list box widget. I'll do the same thing with the done items. Now that I have the two strings I need, I'm going to use a with statement to open a file called tasks.txt in write mode. Opening a file in this mode will either create the file if it doesn't exist, or if it does, delete the existing contents. Both cases are desirable in this app, since we're just going to automatically save any tasks over any old save tasks. Then I'll write to the file with the dot write method, using an f string to include those two variables from above, and adding the new line characters to put each tab separated list of tasks on its own line. Let's do some testing now. I'll add a few tasks, move some of them to the done list, and then close the app. I now have a new tasks.txt file in the project directory, and we can see that the first line is the tasks that remained in the to-do list, and the second line contains the tasks that I moved to the done list. So let's look at loading in these tasks when our application starts. Back in the load tasks function, I'll delete that print statement, then open tasks.txt. Without specifying a second argument with the open method, the file will be opened in read mode. We'll then read the contents into a list with the read lines method, and this will put each individual line of the file into a list. 
let's see what the tasks variable looks like by printing it out at this point. Each of the two lines is a string, with the tasks separated by tab characters and ending with a new line character. We're going to set the contents of each list box with the items property. Starting with the to do list box, we take the first line at index 0, strip out that new line character at the end with dot strip, then split the resulting string on the tab character. And then we'll do the same thing with the done items. And when we run our code, we can see that our tasks have been restored whenever we close and reopen the app. We do have a small problem here if one of the list boxes is empty when it's saved. When we load back in, we get this empty task, which just kind of sits there and we can't really get rid of it. So what we'll do is back in the code, just check that each line is not just the new line character before populating each list box. And when we do that, we no longer have these empty tasks. Now, if you've been coding for longer than five minutes, you know that things can go wrong. And this is especially true when dealing with resources that are external to the application, like files. So we need to consider what could go wrong and then deal with those errors appropriately. Like most programming languages, Python supports exceptions, which allows us to write some code that might cause errors, and then we can catch any of those errors. In Python, we put the code in a try block and then catch any errors in one or more except blocks. So let's get that set up in our load tasks function. The most obvious thing that could go wrong is that our tasks file just isn't there. It might have been deleted, or the task file might have been moved to a different location. If the file is missing, a file not found exception will be raised when we try to open that file. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to do nothing by using the pass statement. Now, this is not generally regarded as good practice since we're effectively silencing the error and not reporting it to the user. But maybe that's OK. It could be the first time that the user has run the program, for example, so the tasks file doesn't yet exist. But what if the file is not of the correct format? If there's only a single line in the file, then the call to read lines will result in a list of length 1, and there won't be an index 1 in the tasks variable for our done items, so Python will raise an index error, and we can catch that in a second except block. For this exception, I'm going to pop up an alert window to inform the user that the tasks file is not of the correct format. In GUIPy, the alert method requires a title, message, and icon. I'll construct the message in a separate variable since it's a bit wordy, and then call app.alert with a title of could not load tasks file, the message above, and use an info icon. It might not be the most helpful of messages in terms of fixing the problem, but it does go some way towards explaining why there are no tasks showing up, and the problem will hopefully fix itself when the user exits and the tasks file is resaved. So to test this, I'll purposely break the tasks file by deleting the contents, which will trigger that exception, and there is the alert window. But we have a bit of a user interface problem now, because the main window is this nondescript empty square instead of the user interface we so lovingly created, and it only pops into existence once we've dismissed the alert window. This is because we're popping up this alert window before the call to app.run. The way to fix this is to set the load tasks function as an onOpen function which will run after the main window has initialized and launched. It works just the same as the onClose function, so I'll edit that line. The tasks file has been restored, so I'll break it again by deleting the contents, and now when the app opens, we see our familiar user interface and the alert window on top. Next up on our What Can Go Wrong tour is thinking about what might happen when we try to save the file. One exception that we'll look at here is the permission error exception, which is raised if we don't have permission to create or overwrite the tasks.txt file. So, as before, I'll wrap the main logic of the save tasks function in a try block and catch the permission error exception. And here I'll do something a little bit different. Because the save tasks function needs to return a value to either close the app or keep it open, I'll inform the user that their tasks cannot be saved and then give them the option to exit or not. I'll use the confirm yes no pop up, which is similar to the alert pop up but has two buttons, yes and no, rather than a single OK button. As a consequence, the confirm yes no method returns a value depending on which button was pressed. 
If the user presses yes to exit, the window will close, and if they press no, the confirm window will return false and the window will stay open, perhaps giving the user a chance to diagnose the file permission error or maybe take a screenshot or write down any tasks they've yet to do. In fact, it might actually be useful to say precisely where the file permission error is, so I'll go up to the top of the Python file and import the OS library. Then use the getCWD method to return the current directory, integrating that into the error message. I'm also realizing here that I'm presenting the user with yes or no options, but I haven't actually posed a question. So I'll add a couple of new lines and add that into the message. So now the user has a bit more information to work with, with the option to proceed with quitting without saving, or press no to go back to their tasks. We can test for this error either by making the tasks file or the current folder read only. I'm in Windows, so in an Explorer window, I can right click on the file, go to Properties, and select this checkbox to make it read only. Now, when I close the app triggering the Save Tasks function, I get my error popping up. Pressing No sends me back to the window, and pressing Yes closes the window. Well, it's taken us a bit over 11 minutes, but we now have two functions, saving to and loading from a file, including error handling that should cover most problems we encounter. All of our tasks are now saved automatically when we exit our to-do app and then loaded back in when we start it back up again. But wait, there's more. Our text file solution works fine, but another approach we could take is using the JSON format. JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation, but it's really just a way of storing data in a standard, structured way. Let's dive in and see how it works. I'll start by Control or Command dragging our Python file to copy it and renaming it to do json.py. We'll be using the built-in JSON library, so we'll go up to the top of the file and import the library there. The general structure of the load tasks and save tasks function will remain the same. I'll start by writing the save tasks function, so I'll go down to the bottom and comment out the line that calls the load tasks function until we have the saving working. The JSON method we're going to use is the dump method, which takes a single data structure or variable, converts it to the JSON format, and writes it to a file. At the moment, we have two separate lists, the to-do list and the done list, and we need to combine these into a single data structure before we can save the whole thing to a file. A dictionary here makes sense, so I'll construct that dictionary first, calling it tasks, and I'll store the to-do items using a key of to-do and the done items with a key of done. To save to the file, I'll change the name of the file to tasks.json and call json.dump, passing in the task dictionary I just created and the file object above. And now if I run the app and add some tasks, when I exit, the json file is created alongside our other files. If we look at this file, we can see it looks just like a Python dictionary, but really this is just a plain text file. One advantage of being a widely accepted standard is that many other programming languages can also open this file and convert it to a data structure in that specific language. Because JSON is designed to be human readable, we could also add an indent option when we write to the file. And if we run the app and close it to save those tasks, we can see that the file is now formatted a bit more neatly, as you can see here. So that is the save function done. The same permission error exception might occur when trying to save the file, so we can leave the rest of the function exactly as is. To load the tasks file and populate the list box widgets, we first open the file and then call the json.load method on the file object. This method parses the file and converts it back into a Python dictionary of the format that we defined in the save tasks function. And then it's a matter of populating those widgets in our GUI by referencing each list using its key. Let's go ahead and uncomment the load tasks function at the bottom of our code. And when we run the app, the tasks from our JSON file populate the two list boxes with the data in the tasks.json file. And as I move these tasks between the done and the to-do list boxes, you can see the changes reflected in the tasks.json file. Because our tasks variable is no longer a list like it was in the plain text file, the index error is no longer possible. However, if the file was modified such that it was correct JSON, but didn't include a to-do or done key in the dictionary, then a key error could result. So I'll change the exception from index error to key error. 
Another possible problem is that our tasks file is decoded into a data type that isn't a dictionary at all. So trying to access the value with a key in square brackets will not work and result in a type error. This error warrants the same response to the user, so I can group it with the key error by using parentheses. Finally, if the file was corrupted or empty and thus no longer valid JSON, the JSON decode error will be raised. So we can add that into our exception list to catch that error as well. And that's it. We've kept our tasks file in plain text, but used the JSON standard library to structure it and made use of the standard Python library to create the file and load it back up. The third and final method for saving our tasks is by using the Python pickle library. I'll copy the current file to do json.py and rename it to to do pickle.py. And for this method, instead of importing the JSON library, I'll import pickle instead. Just like JSON, pickle is part of the Python standard library, so you won't need to install any extras. As before, I'll comment out the call to load tasks and get saving tasks working first. There are some important differences between pickle and JSON. First, it's Python only. No other programming language can unpickle the file. This means that you're able to pickle more things that you can encode with JSON, including objects, functions, and classes. Another big difference, as we'll see, is that the saved file is not a text file. So let's dive in and see how it works. Despite the differences, the pickle library takes a very similar approach and syntax to JSON. I first need to combine my two lists into a single data structure, so I'll leave that code exactly as is. I want a new file, so I'll rename tasks.json to tasks.pickle. And one important but subtle difference here is that we need to open the file in binary format, which means adding a B to the open mode. Just like JSON, the method to write to the file is also dump. But because it's not human readable, there is no indent option when creating that file. Let's run our app, add some tasks, and let's try to have a look at the resulting pickle file. Straight away, VS Code warns us that the file is not a text file, and if we click open anyway, while we do see some of our tasks in there, we also see a whole lot of nonsense characters as well. So did this work? The only way to find out is to reverse the process in our load tasks function, so let's do that now. We first need to change the file name to tasks.pickle and set the open mode to RB for reading the file in binary mode. Just like the JSON library, the method for unpickling the data is the load method, and the result of that should be a dictionary in the same format as what we pickled. Let's go ahead and uncomment the load tasks call and test this. And there we go. While it's pretty unlikely getting a key or a type error here, I'll just leave those in. But if the file is corrupted, then we need to catch the pickle.unpickling error. So I'll replace the JSON decode error with that, and we're done. So there we have it. Three different ways to get data from your app into a file and then back again. See if you can integrate one of these methods into your projects, and let me know how you go in the comments. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.